2020 is almost over and you know what that means, lists. So in today's video, I'm gonna bring you my top five gaming mice of 2020. Before we start though, I wanna get a few disclaimers out of the way. Now these are the top five mice that I have personally used throughout 2020. I have not used every single one out there and I know I'm missing a lot of good ones like the Viper Mini or the Viper Ultimate Refresh. I know I'm aware of that, so just keep that in mind. These are only the ones that I've used. And on top of the five, I have two honorable mentions that'll be at the end of the video. All right, so starting off the video with number five is the Rockat Burst Pro. If you like optical switches, then the Burst Pro is easily one of the top three releases this year. Unfortunately for me, I don't care too much for optical switches. They don't feel as crisp or tactile when compared to mechanical switches. In turn, they also fail to give me that certain feedback that I look for in a switch. That aside, the Burst Pro has nearly everything that you would want from a gaming mouse. The build quality is superb with no creaks, squeaks, or rattles. The sensor provides consistent, stellar performance with no hiccups. The scroll wheel is great with smooth, light steps and a good middle mouse button. The large side buttons are placed perfectly and provide a great tactile click with only minimal pre-travel. The stock skates are pretty decent after some breaking time as well. And while the cable is not the most flexible, it does the job just fine and so far appears durable. All this in a translucent and lightweight body that makes it easy and effortless to aim with. You can get the mouse on sale right now for $50 down from the original $60. Moving on to number four, we have the HyperX Pulsefire Haste. Though HyperX's previous mice weren't bad per se, they lack the qualities that gamers today look for in a gaming mouse. Well, someone at HyperX must have been listening to feedback and ideas because the Pulsefire Haste is an awesome hidden gem. The Haste comes in at $50 and offers great performance in the PixArt 3335 sensor, a 59 gram lightweight body, and a surprisingly good stock cable and skates. The star of the show for me though are the main clicks. While a majority of mouse makers go with Omron switches as the default, HyperX opted for TTC Gold switches, which feel spectacular. Let's hope they continue down this road and bring us more great mice in 2021 that can compete head to head with those at the top of the food chain. Moving on to number three, we have the Model O Wireless. Glorious has finally made their presence in the wireless market known and their first entry is impressive. The Model O Wireless retains the same great shape that you're used to, but cuts the cord and ups the build quality to make it a top contender that undercuts the bigger companies. Wireless connectivity, tactile and snappy clicks, improved scroll wheel, USB-C charging, great stock skates, and a new sensor makes the Model O Wireless and its $80 price tag a no-brainer for those who want to stay within the Glorious brand and also benefit from new features. Coming in at number two is the ExtraFi M42. The M42 is built like a tank, which is even more impressive considering that it's a 63 gram mouse with removable back shell. When it comes to performance, the M42 is no slouch thanks to the PMW3389 sensor, excellent main clicks, and what I believe is the best scroll wheel on any mouse currently out there. Though geared mostly towards smaller hands, the ability to change out the back plate opens up a world of possibilities, especially considering that ExtraFi gives you the 3D file in order to modify and print your own shell. The mouse ranges from $59 to $69 depending on the edition you choose. For everything the mouse offers, I would consider this a great deal. And finally, as you may have guessed it, the number one mouse for 2020 for me is the Backseat MP01. It's not often that a new company releases a product that is nearly perfect, but Backseat has managed to do just that with the MP01. Geared towards the esports scene, you won't find any flashy RGB or unnecessary elements. Instead, you get a mouse that delivers a consistent and reliable top tier performance without any nonsense getting in the way. The clicks are some of the best right now, the scroll wheel is loud but tactile, and the PMW3389 sensor is excellent. The best thing about the mouse to me is the unique shape that combines the best of ergo and ambi mice into a package that feels like it was made just for me. The shape provides the best grip I've had on any mouse which translates over to my in-game performance. No, it's not perfect. The cable is on the stiffer side, the skates are thinner than normal, and some may worry about the 80 gram weight when recent mice are coming in under 65 grams. But as a package, the MP01 is my number one because of how it comes together to provide the best experience I've had this year with a mouse. From the web browsing to getting ACES and Valorant, the MP01 is amazing and seamlessly becomes an extension of my arm once I pick it up at the start of my day. Okay, so those are my top five, and now I have two honorable mentions that could have been on the list if something else was tweaked or made better about them. First off is the Zowie S1. 
This mouse came out of nowhere and completely took me by surprise at how much I really liked it. For a while there, I was trying to get used to and like the S2, but I found it a little bit too small for my hand size and grip. One day I saw an S1 for cheap and I bought it. And from the very first time I tried it, I absolutely fell in love with it. It provided so much more back support for my palm and it just felt great. There are only a few things I would like to see changed in the S1. One being the weight, nearing 90 grams, I would love to see this go down to about 70, maybe even 65 to 68 grams. Besides that, the only other upgrade I would love to see on the S line, or any Zawi mouse for that matter, is an improved sensor, uh, preferably the 3370 or a 3389. The 3360 that it currently has in it is fine, it works well, it's great, but I would just like to see an updated version of this, ideally wireless, with a lower weight and a nice sensor, but something tells me that's not gonna happen anytime soon, unfortunately. And the second runner up is the G Pro Wireless X Superlight, or however you say it. So to be honest, the G Pro Wireless, the original, was my main for the longest time. Since the first day that I got it, it was the mouse that was always on my desk. I always used it, always went back to it. I don't know what it was, something about the feel of it, the shape was perfect for my hand, the weight was just right. It just felt and exuded quality to me. Some people even call it the iPhone of the mouse world. And I agree, there's just something about it that this mouse has that others don't or can't come close to. So to say I was super excited about the release of the Superlight is an understatement. Unfortunately, my copy failed to meet my quality control standards. The Superlight was a complete disappointment to me having loved the clicks of the original G Pro Wireless. Now I'm so optimistic about this mouse and I'm hoping that I can exchange this for a better copy in the future once they're back in stock. Until then though, I can't really recommend this mouse for this price point of $150. For that much, you can get the Model O wireless for, with much better quality control and clicks or the MP1 with its stellar build quality and best in class clicks. Okay, so there you have it. These are my top five gaming mice of 2020. Any one of these I can highly recommend and you cannot go wrong with either one. Personally, again, my favorite is the MPO one thanks to its great clicks, build quality, and just overall solid feel. Let me know down in the comments what your favorite mouse of 2020 was. Also, let me know what you expect to see in 2021. Do you want all mice to be wireless from now on? Do you want all switches to be optical? What do you expect from the big brands? Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.